Lee County. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's me. I can't see myself, but I think you can see me. My name is Aggie Reyes. I'm the Vice President of Program for Girl Scouts of Eastern South Carolina. And I'm so sorry that we missed you at our face-to-face -face trainings, but um, this is why we did this because I, we know that everybody's not comfortable uh, attending um, the live trainings, but uh, we did have a lot of participants. In fact, we did not have to cancel not one of our live trainings because we had people at every single one. Um, on, on there here with us is Ashley Bearfield. She is our uh, girl program specialist. She is going to be answering questions you may have on chat. So she has muted everybody. Um, and also with us is Anne uh, from Little Brownie, and she is going to jump in at some slides and tell us uh, some really exciting things that Little Brownie has. And uh, Deborah Paisley, my awesome assistant, is also online. And uh, if you all need to talk to her as well, we will unmute Deborah, and you all are more than welcome to talk to all of us. So I'm going to go ahead and begin. Um, let's see. Let's. Oh, well, now you don't want to. Click huh, computer. Okay, there we go. All right. So I don't know if you all knew this, but last year, and I don't know for how many years, and um, in fact, somebody asked me at a training and I didn't know how to respond because I didn't know the answer. Uh, but Little Brownie, it was part of Kellogg, um, and now they are part of Ferrara. And Ferrara is actually the company that makes the Nutella and the Ferrara Rochers that you see at the stores. But do you know that, Anne, how many years? Um, Little Brownie was under Kellogg? We were under Kellogg for almost 20 years, and we've been part of Ferrera for the last year. And the transition oh. has gone beautifully, and they support and really appreciate, they are very engaged in the Girl Scout cookie business. Yes, we're excited. We are very excited. So. Um, and of course, together with Ferrara, we are uh, they're supporting growth for girls and of course our awesome bakers, Little Brownie. So on today's agenda, we are going to review the theme and mascot um, and rewards. We are going to talk, um, Anne is going to talk to you about some really neat virtual rally resources, uh, some cookie booth resources, of course, the cookies themselves, some volunteer training support some really, really nice uh, social media toolkit that Little Brownie has come up with. It's, everybody loved it, Anne, just so you know. And some uh, 2021 eBuddy enhancements. All right, so right before this meeting, I emailed you all this form. This is the Troop Cookie Manager form. Um, it is also on our website. In fact, all, our, our, all these forms that I'm going over will, are on our website. The PowerPoint and this, this training, this recording will be on our website tomorrow. Um, after it's done, it has to, we have to collect it and I'll turn it into uh, Donna for her to upload. And uh, for those who want to take training, we're no longer going to do any more uh, Zooms or in-person trainings for the year, but this recording will count as cookie training. So um, please make sure you fill this out and turn it into Deborah. This is how we give you access to eBuddy. And then on the left side, you see the ACH debit form. I also emailed you that form. This form is, we, is very important and we do need it so that we can also give you access to eBuddy, but also so the council can ACH um, your account when it's time to do the, the ACHs. On the right hand side, uh, you don't have that on, um, it's not in your email. <laughs> it's weird doing this in front of a computer instead of in front of people, so I apologize. Uh, but the money handling procedures is also on our website. Please make sure you read those so you know um, they are the same as that last year. This discrepancy report on the left-hand side is also on our, on our website. Um, and the only reason you would need this is if for the A, B, or C as you can see right there. The first one, A, would be NSF check. So that is that means a customer wrote a check and it did not have sufficient funds. So you would submit that along with this form and we would take care of that for you all. Any delinquencies, so any parent that owes you money, um, you would also turn in what it tells you there, the parent permission forms and then permission form and any receipts uh, associated with that parent that owes money. And then C is counterfeit money. Yes. 
Uh, just pausing for a second, we have a lot of questions about the ACH. Uh, so just wanted to clear it up. If you have already turned in the ACH form during our fall sale this year, you do not need to turn one in again. However, if you did not do the fall sales, you will need to turn it in again, even if you did it last year and even if nothing has changed. That uh, is correct. That is correct, Ashley. And I, I thank you for uh, jumping in on that. I usually say that. I just forgot. You've been to my trainings. I always say that. <laughs> I, I, I didn't say that. So Ashley is correct. Uh, I'll go back to that, that slide. So the ACH is this one on the left. If you sold fall product this past season, like right now, like we're just finishing up, you do not have to turn this form in. But if you sold fall product last year or even cookies, well, not even last year, it was the beginning of this year, uh, we do need a new one. That is absolutely correct. We like to make sure that our, our records are accurate and, and recent. So yes, if you did not sell fall product for 2020, we do need a new cookie, uh, a new ACH form for your troop. Even other if the items did not change. That is correct. Any other uh, questions regarding that, Ashley? No. Okay, great. So um, I went back to the discrepancy report page and C was counterfeit money. Uh, it does happen, unfortunately, and we will help you and take care of that, but we do need this form filled out with something stating uh, from your bank that they have confiscated the money or uh, the bill or bills. And uh, But in order to avoid that, I would suggest that you all go to the store, Walmart sells them, any office supply store, one of those pins, the black pins that like, um, you just mark every single bill. Trust me, I've seen them from $1 to $5 bills. Uh, majority of them are usually the like 50 or 100, but it does happen. So make sure that you do get a counterfeit of uh, the pin so that way you all can mark your, your bills, okay? Um, so then on the right-hand side, you do see the parent permission form. Uh, this is on our website as well. It has, it does change every year and you do need a new one from your parents every year because you want every single year for your parents to, it's just a reminder of what they are signing, what they're financially responsible for. And then also the other reason for that is because if you see like towards the bottom of the page where it says girl choices, it, um, on the higher awards, we do ask for choices from the girls. So that way they can already pick them and then turn that into you. We do not need them at the office. Those are yours unless, um, like I said, unless you need to fill out that discrepancy report and then turn it into us because they owe the council and your troop money. All right, so these forms here on this page are coming. It is on the left-hand side, the cookies for a cause sheet. I love the sheet because Aggie, we do like, yes. Just one more thing. All uh -huh. of our forms are going to be on our website. So yes, if in the cookie part of our website, including the parent form, it will be yeah. on our website. It, it, is is all, already. it is already on our website, including this cookies for a cause form. The only one that's not on here is the order card. That's not on our website yet. And our order card, I don't even like to put on our website until the cookies begin because I just don't want people doing pre-sales. So I, the, the less temptation there is for parents and girls, the better it is for everyone. So that's why the order card will not be on there yet. So as I mentioned, this Cookies for a Cause is on our website and you will also get it in color. It's because you should actually take it to your, your cookie booths, put it in a document holder, in a sheet protector, laminate it. Uh, let your customers know that in case like some are diabetic, uh, some people are on diets and they don't wanna buy cookies for themselves to consume, but it, uh, we can remind our customers that if they don't want them, they can actually donate for Cookies for a Cause. And then, as I said, these are coming to the order card and the money envelopes. All right, so we have this really important date. And just so you know, this date was different. I updated it <laughs> right before this training because if the girls are not in there now, um, they are going to have to wait until the second round of, of imports into eBuddy and into Digital Cookie. So make sure that your girls are registered. Um, honestly guys by December 7th and there it had a date at, <laughs> of November 16th which was yesterday and the reason for that is because GSUSA is doing some back-end stuff uh, to our our system and we not even us the councils will have access to the system as of tomorrow 
Um, so we need the girls registered so that way they can begin to sell. We are doing something different this year and I really, I, I will stop for questions after this because normally I do get questions. As you can see on the screen, the girls can begin to sell online only starting December 11th, okay? When I say online only, that doesn't mean the girls can take pre-sales, go door to door. They can send their digital cookie link to customers. And the beauty about this is that if a customer does decide to um, have them uh, ship directly to them, they can actually have cookies in time for the holidays. So of course, Santa loves Girl Scout cookies. Our customers love would love to have some Girl Scout cookies for, for the holidays. And then somebody mentioned at a training that they make great uh, stocking stuffers. And so the girls, like I said, can begin to sell online only on December 11th. Now, if a customer does choose the girl delivery portion, it's going to be like before, where the girl, the you all as leaders, the, those forms, I'm sorry, those orders will gather. And then once the cookies come in on January 16th, then that is how those get filled by the girls and the troop. Hope that makes sense. So again, that doesn't mean that a girl or a parent can go on Facebook right now and say on our, I'm sorry, on December 11th and say, hey, my daughter's selling cookies. How many would you like? What you can do is send them the link so that they can um, have them delivered to them, to the customer or begin to track them by the girl delivery option. I'm stopping for questions. And Anne, did I say that correctly? You did, yes. Okay. Aggie, the question that we have uh, is registered for Girl Scouts or registered to sell cookies? I'm assuming she means like actually registered for the membership year. Yes. So that's what you mean, right? Because every girl is imported into eBuddy regardless if they're selling or not selling, correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. So by December 7th, every girl needs to be registered as a Girl Scout. That is correct. Any other That's questions? The only question. That, oh, okay. Nice. Um, oh. Just, just to clarify, so no Facebook posts with links on 12 11 2020, just Girl Scouts sending links through emails. That is correct. Okay, that's that's all I have. Nice. Okay, so these important dates, I I will be honest, these are not on our website, but I will upload them um, as well. It's a, it will be this important date sheet. Um, as I mentioned, that, that date on top, we did have November 16th. Uh, the other thing was that girls can begin to sell through digital cookie on December 11th. Aggie? Yes. Clarification between a Facebook post and a personal message. So are we seeing personal messages as emails or a Facebook post? Well, like if, so for example, if there's a lot of people that communicate through Facebook only or Instagram or Twitter, whatever, right? So like, let's say my, I don't know my sister's email, but I, I, I can of course message her through Facebook and then get her email and then send her the link. Because it has to be the personal, each girl's individual link in order for the girl to get credit for that. Okay, that so personal message is allowed because. Yeah. They don't have it, okay. Also, yeah, but they the can't do, form. Go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say they can't do pre-orders. So they can't send a message and already store orders, basically. Okay. And then, so, okay. So it says, does the parent forms need to be completed before 12-11 for online sales? The parent permission form? Yes. Yeah, because that is um, allowing a girl to participate into the troop. Okay. For the sale, for the 2021 season. Okay. And so the girls can't post her link on her Facebook profile? No. Okay. Does that answer that question? I think, I mean, I feel like that's clear, but personal message for email links only. That's correct. Yes. Um, can people post that they are selling in a neighborhood page. This was happening a lot last year and no one was sure if it was okay or not. No, and I will get to that. There is a screen, there is a um, slide on this. So we can hold off on that question until we get to that slide. 
Okay, and then another question was, when can we post on social media? And I think that will be coming as well, correct? That is correct, January 16th, which is the day the sale starts. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna the let you go on and I'll let you know again. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ashley. So the troop initial order is due December 15th into eBuddy, um, and that is so you all can have cookies in hand as we did this past season on January 16th. So um, service units have until December 17th. On the 17th, you all will be locked out. So troop leaders, that gives you guys a little bit more cushion if you're not comfortable with your initial order. If you feel like, oh my gosh, I didn't order enough or, or I ordered too little, or I mean too many, uh, your service unit cookie chair does have the ability to make any edits to them by uh, December 17th, midnight. As I mentioned, the cookie sale does start January 16th and the cookie deliveries do start the week of January 11th. Cookie booths start the weekend of um, January 23rd and they do run through March 14th. Now, if you all had not have noticed, we did push the cookie sale one week back. And the reason we did that was because when we looked at the calendar, the way the new year lands, it was just too quick to start. But the beauty of it, uh, starting on January 16th is that on that following Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So basically you all have like an extra day of door to door sales. So that's a plus. <laughs> and then Bling My Booth weekend is the weekend of uh, February 26th through the 28th. The first ACH is February 5th. The second ACH is February 19th. The cookie sale does end on March 14th. The money is due to, by the girls to troop leaders March 21st. The final rewards is due by you troop leaders into eBuddy by March 23rd. And then the final ACH is April 2nd. Any questions on these dates? Uh, they were asking when will cookie orders ship from December 11th? So for example, like the ones from the warehouse, when will those ship out? And or, do you know the, the, so the answer to that? For digital cookie, they process immediately. And so they will begin shipping within two to three days of the order being placed. That is correct. And you're one of the first councils to open digital cookie. So they, they won't be really busy at that point in time. Right. Okay. So okay. the theme, the the theme is, thank you, Ashley. So the theme this year is we've got this. Every year, the cookie vendors and our fall product vendors, they come up with a theme and a mascot. And I just love this theme because it is so appropriate. And um, I wish you all would be, if you all would have been at the in-person training, like when we got to this page, everybody's like, that's right, we do have, we, we do got this, uh, you know, especially given the year that we've all had. So it is totally appropriate. Thank you, Little Brownie. And uh, we love this theme. So now I'm gonna go over some numbers. In 2019, we had, our council had 3,129 girls that participated in the cookie program. That doesn't mean that that's the number of girls we had registered. That is just the number of girls that participated in the program. This past season, we had 2,865. In 2019, we had 253 troops that participated. And this past season, we had 234. So what do you all think happened with these results? I know you can't talk to me, but I'm gonna have a little drum roll, please. You all did amazing. As you can see right here in 2019, our per girl average was 275. And of course you all know cookies in hand is a total game changer. Your per girl average went to 360. That is amazing. I couldn't tell you, and maybe Ann knows, um, I haven't seen the report yet, but I couldn't tell you how many councils are at even a 300 per girl average, but you all did amazing. And that was an increase of 85 packages per girl. That, what the way that translates is in 2019, you all sold 72,186 cases or 866,232 packages. In 2020, which was this past season, you all sold 86,175 cases or 1,034,105 packages. That is just amazing. And in fact, Diane and I love to laugh about it because when we had, when we first decided to go to Cookies in Hand, we were talking to each other saying, how long do you think it'll be till we reach a million packages? And both of us were like, it will be two years. 
and you all did it in year one. So that is amazing. Congratulations to all of you. So this Aggie, slide can I just say something real quick? Yeah, of course. Um, I do want to congratulate you. The council saw a 24.6% growth um, from 2019 to 2020, and that was the highest growth that any of our councils had seen across the country. <laughs> so you were the number one growth council, and when you were going to go to the cookies in hand um, type sale, I wasn't quite sure how it was going to be received, but the girls really took it and they ran with it. And so just congratulations to you as troop cookie managers and to the girls that were out there selling every day because a 24.6% increase is amazing. So your girls really wowed the world. Yes. Thank you, Aggie. No, thank you. Anne. And in fact, you're absolutely right. I remember you were very nervous and we're not sure what was going to happen. I was very nervous. <laughs> But look at that. <laughs> so one of these, this slide that I'm showing you right now, um, I love. This is my favorite slide. Yeah, did you have something? Yeah, a very important question. Someone yeah. asked, what is cookies in hand? Oh, is that somebody? Okay, can you ask them if they are new to selling cookies? Did they not participate? Sarah, are you new to selling cookies? So anyway, that's okay. While she responds, cookies it's in hand second is second year. So I don't oh. think she knew any difference. Okay. Well, cookies in hand was we, we did this past year, which was instead of doing pre-orders or order taking and then going back to fill orders, we gave you guys, you all put an initial order into eBuddy and then you guys had cookies in hand the day the cookie sale started. So instead of having to go back to customers, your girls would have had the cookies already in hand and make that sale right then and there. That's what our cookies in hand is. And we do have one new person on here, but nice. just let you know. So if you could maybe reiterate, like when you refer to eBuddy, like eBuddy is like the back system of things. Um, I know we it, have plenty of seasoned volunteers on here. <laughs> yes, and, and I apologize for that because um, I do do that. I believe like everybody knows what I'm talking about, but please let Ashley know if you're like exactly what is eBuddy, what is ACH, what is cookies in hand, please put it in the chat box. Um, Ashley, I know pretty much she's done a bunch of trainings with me as well. So I'm sure she can answer these questions as well. So um, thank you for being here. I want to know who our, our new person is, but we'll talk at the end. So um, this slide that, I'm, that you have in front of you, I love because it tells you the top eight cookies that are sold in the country in one year. And if you look at these sales, you see, of course, number one is the Oreo. I swear that Oreo, we can't touch that darn cookie. Number two are the Thin Mints. Number three, we have Chips Ahoy. Number four, we have Caramel Delights or our Samoas. And number five, we have our Peanut Butter Patties or our Tagalongs. And then as you see the Pepperidge Farms, the Nilla Wafers, and then the Oreo Thins. And the reason I love this slide is because if you think about this, all those other uh, cookies that are not the Girl Scout cookies that I mentioned, those are sold everywhere you look. Those are sold, I mean, grocery stores have aisles dedicated to cookies. Uh, they're at convenience stores, they're at our pharmacies, they're everywhere. And those are sold, like I said, year round. These three cookies that are in the top eight are sold six to eight weeks in one year. So when you think about that, it's mind blowing to me that our customers love our cookies, they love our brand, and people know and want our cookies. They're, they're wanting our cookies. In fact, at most of our trainings, I've, I've heard almost every training, everybody's like, yeah, I already have people asking me, where are the cookies? So our customers are wanting them. Um, so this is what you all sell uh, on 2018, the 2019, that was the mixture, mixture that you all sold. And on the right hand side, the 2019, 2020, you all will see the mixture, the variety mix that you all sold. So if you see right here, our Thin Mints actually, you all had a uh, from 24.1 to 27.8. Um, the yellow one, which is our lemons, uh, you did have a 2% increase. And of course, we can attribute that to our new Lemon Ups. People love tasting the new cookie. And um, I mean, clearly it shows. So this, I love to see, to, to show you all this because I like to, you guys are always say, yeah, this is right. This is exactly the kind of mix that we sell at our cookie booth. So 
um, more numbers for you all. So we've got a spirited mascot. And our mascot is the horse. The horse mascot embodies the strength and confidence girls gain through the Girl Scout cookie program. This is what our mascot stuffed animal looks like and she does have a name. Her name is Hope. What's really neat about Hope is that she has, you see that um, saddle she has on top, the saddle blanket, it is reversible. And then uh, the plush can like lie down or stand up. And then that little bow that's on her head, she can, it can also be removed. So we love this mascot. I think she's beautiful. And then here are some fun facts on the mascot. Fillies are fearless. A young female horse is called a filly. Horses are go-getters right out of the gate. They can run within hours of birth. And of course, they have their eyes on the prize. Horses have bigger eyes than any other land mammal. And then the benefits for the girls, of course, are the five skills. The girls don't even know that they are doing this. They just know that they're having fun. They're meeting the, their goals, especially this past season. Um, you have no idea how many of you emailed me and it was beautiful, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, like by week two, many of you emailed me saying, we've already sold um, double of what we did the year before and it's barely week two. So you guys did absolutely amazing. Um, and of course the girls, they loved it too. Uh, they learned their goal setting, money management, business ethics, decision making, and people skills. And then the recognitions are cumulative. So if a girl reaches the 800 level, she, she um, earns the whatever's at 800 and then everything below. Um, they do come in May or June. Uh, we did have a little bit of a, a delay on the options for uh, resident camp because of COVID, you all know that we were unable to have resident camp. So we did offer girls the either an outdoor bundle or the movie bundle. So um, other than that, everything else uh, is comes in between May and June. So these are the rewards this year, okay? Um, I'm really excited about some of the things we're doing, the choices at the 800 level. Um, I'm going to go to this next slide and then I promise you all I will come right back to this slide, okay? So at the 800 level, we are flying in Chef Dana. So Chef Dana is best known. He was TLC season winner, one winner of Cake Boss, Cake Boss the Next Great Baker. And if you see right here his bio, he has been in all these other shows. He's been featured in a lot of magazines. He's baked for some famous celebrities. And he is very, very, very excited to be coming and doing an in-person class with our girls. So um, fingers crossed, he is already booked. He is, um, we've already put down the deposit. Um, the only thing is that we're hoping is that our COVID, COVID allows for him to fly in. But if in case he cannot fly in, we will um, do a virtual cooking class with him. But now I'm gonna go back. So that is at the 800 level. So the girls can choose, um, oh, and I'll go back right away because this is another thing that everybody, all you late leaders noticed that he had no ring on that finger. So, you know, there's Chef Dana. <laughs> uh, so um, the, the girls can choose between the cooking class or a skylight or the mess kit with a reusable straw and adventure stool. At the 1100, we did keep Sandy Ridge, a week at Sandy Ridge. We are going, um, in fact, Chuck should have the camp brochure out in the next week. Uh, so we are planning as if things are gonna get better and we are going to have resident camp. So um, watch out for that camp brochure. It should be coming in the next week, week or two. Uh, so we, the girls can choose between a week at resident camp or the basketball arcade game and hydro class. At the 2000 level, the girls can choose between a karaoke machine or a guitar. At the 2500 level, the girls can choose between a season pass to Carowinds Amusement Park or Wild Water and Wheels season pass in Myrtle Beach or Apple AirPods. And at the 3000 level this year, uh, we are offering the girls to choose, to choose between a Carnival Cruise to the Bahamas or the Canon Deluxe Camera Starter Kit. So um, as you can also see, uh, Juliana is featured. She was our top cookie seller for this year. Uh, she sold 5,042 packages and her sister, I love to say, sold an additional 3,000. So out of Conway, South Carolina, these two girls sold over 8,000 packages. 
All right. And you want to talk a little bit about this, the QR code? And I muted myself. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, on your order card, we have a QR code and the QR code when you open your camera for your phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android phone, it will open up a series of unboxing videos. So what's really cool is, for example, on our cooling fabric bandana, the little girl shows us how to use it, that you get it damp and you snap it and then it cools you down on the hot day and she's excited to take it to camp. We have two cousins um, that did the video for us on the pocket pillow with the journal and the pen. And then we're just now publishing the canteen and the socks are under GSUSA approval. So it's kind of fun so that the girls can see how exciting um, the rewards are and how other girls are, are perceiving them as well. So right. take a look. Yeah, and kids love doing that. I know my kids love watching other people unbox and do that kind of stuff. I, I personally don't get it, but hey, whatever kids like, right? <laughs> And then, of course, we still offer um, rewards for digital cookie and for cookies for a cause. And then what I love is you all have to see these cookies patches in person. They are so beautiful. They are such a good size, especially right here, these four on the side, the left side. Um, if they, the girls earn all of these four, they do earn uh, the, they build the horse fence and those are really, really cute. Um, but what's we're going to do different this year is the initial order troop per girl average reward. So, and I'm going to have Anne at the end of our, of our uh, presentation um, present to you all what she came up with uh, for us, the cookie calculator to help you determine your 2021 initial order. And it is really, really neat. And I, everybody loved it too, Anne, and was like, oh my gosh, this is so much simpler. So um, we're hoping that this will help you. And again, Anne did this specifically for our council and I will have her explain this um, at the end of our, towards the end of our, our the, the slideshow. So as I mentioned, uh, the cookie trip this year is a cookie, is a cruise, carnival cruise to the Bahamas. It will be in June, 2021. I don't have an exact date yet. And that's because um, I'm trying to see with all the school districts when uh, school ends for everybody. Um, and I also don't want to do it in July because I don't want it to interfere with resident camp. But the cruise is girl led and then the uh, council does take staff to chaperone. One of the things we're doing this year is just like um, next year's just like we did this year. If the girls do not want to earn a get earn a certain reward. Let's say they don't like the 350 package reward. They can choose to donate uh, two packs of diapers like it says here. The girls do earn that really cool patch you see in the middle that says changing diapers, changing lives and the Girl Scouts of Eastern South Carolina. And in fact, uh, Ashley is also working on a uh, program right now where we, the girls can actually help us bundle some of those packages. Um, so there's more information on that to come. And what's really cool is that this past year, even though we didn't advertise it as much, we didn't know what to expect. But 271 of our girls donated over 5,300 diapers to Junior League of Charleston. That's amazing. That says like 10% of our girls decided to forego and a reward um, or rewards and decided to give to our community. So our girls are awesome. Of course, I don't have to tell you all that. You all know this, but this is Diane on, our, on, on your screen. She is Everyone knows Diane. I'm surprised she's not doing jazz hands here. And then on the left is Tanya Stobbs. She is also one of our, our Mount Pleasant service, uh, service unit managers. So we like to talk about uh, Tanya as well. So the benefits to your troops and service units are the same. Troops do receive 85 cents per package. Service units do receive one cent per package sold by girls in their service unit that does not include delinquent packages. Remember, I know you all don't need to remember this because uh, you all know this, but we need to remind our parents that the money belongs to the troop, not the individual girls. And it is written in your, on their parent permission forms as well. I love to feature this troop, although going around and doing these cookie trainings, you all do this in spades as well. 
So this troop is out of Charleston and um, what they do is their own cookies for a cause, which you all are more than welcome to do, except this doesn't count for the council's cookies for a cause. The girls obviously still get credit, but they don't get the cookies for a cause rewards. It doesn't uh, work towards that. They love to do their own cookies for a cause every year. Uh, in fact, last year they donated to the um, janitorial services, the people who come and pick up like our trash can or our trash. And uh, then the, they loved it so much that the city council even uh, um, gave them a certificate. They had like a ceremony for them. It was really, really nice. Uh, Deborah and I got to go to that and it was, it was really nice. And this year they actually uh, donated to the, their local police department. So I'm still not sure what they're gonna do next year, but I also heard that uh, a lot of troops and service unit will, uh, I think Somerville, it was Somerville service unit that they will give to their community, uh, their Ronald McDonald home, their, the caretakers for uh, patients with cancer. I mean, you all do so many things and keep up the good work. Okay, so I'm not sure if any of you utilized this last year, but if you did, you do not have to add me again because it is the same. Uh, remind, this is just a way for you all to communicate with me and for us to communicate with you. Um, I know that many of you um, texted me or messaged me directly through, um, through Remind, and I love it because I'm not, during cookies, I'm not always at my desk. I'm taking cookies to Myrtle Beach. I'm bringing back cookies. And this is a quick way for you all to send me, like, it's like a text, really. And um, to me, I love it. It comes straight to my phone. And if it's an easy question, I'll get right back to you instead of you all having to send me an email. And let me tell you, during cookies, I get <laughs> tons of emails. So yeah, this is a lot quicker for me. And I think I'm going to let Anne talk about the next slides. I, I think you're Thank on. Thank you, Aggie. Yeah, you're welcome. I was. Sorry, my husband came in. Um, so volunteers, we've got you as well. We know we've got the girls covered with the cookies, but we've got you with resources that you can use to help um, make this a great cookie, the best cookie season ever. So there are volunteer resources available at littlebrowniebakers.com, but we've also added resources um, in a toolkit in the eBuddy Help Center. So once you can get into eBuddy, and um, you go to the Help Center, which is the last tab on the right-hand side. We have lots of brand new resources for you there as well. So we have skill building and goal crushing fun. And we know that rally time is big time fun. So we do have rally resources for you. Um, this is just an example of some of the resources we have. This is our paper doll chain. And the girls can each color their paper doll, put their name on it, and talk about the strengths that they feel that they have. So just a fun little activity they could put their goals on there. Um, we know not all rallies are going to be in person this year, so we've developed um, virtual rally resources. We have a full video, 60 minutes from beginning to end, but we also know with some of the smaller girls, 60 minutes is a really long time. So we've broken it down into six learning modules um, with activity breaks in between. So it's great content for your troop meetings as you're leading up to the cookie program. We do have a virtual rally cookie rally guide and virtual backgrounds. Um, Aggie has one of our virtual backgrounds. I have one of our newer ones that I don't believe is posted yet, but we have two for each cookie. We have three different mascot backgrounds, a lot of at-home activities and social interactions. These virtual rally resources are in the eBuddy Help Center and ready to go for you when you're ready. Beautiful, and then I will go ahead and go over this next slide. Um, so what one of Perfect. the things we are not going to do this year is we're not going to have a council. Uh, usually we had done a cookie rally here in Charleston. We're not going to do one this year. So what we want to do from um, is encourage you all to do your own this year. This year, if you all do your uh, a cookie rally in person or virtually, send me some pictures. Tell me how many girls participated and I will send you all a patch for free for each one of your girls that participated. So all you have to do is email me and I will get you a patch, okay? 
So one of the things we are going to do in 2022 is I want to actually have an, an actual council wide cookie rally. So our council right now has a history of every service unit does their own rally and that's okay. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you all want to continue to do that, that is absolutely okay. But the reason we want to do one in 2022 is we would love representation from all service units. Um, and we are looking for volunteers to help coordinate a council-wide rally. And if you all are interested, please contact Ashley or Danielle. Um, at, our old, at our council that I came from, uh, Diane and I uh, work together in Texas. Uh, we used to have a council-wide uh, cookie rally and it was probably my best, the best event that we ever had. The girls would come together, all the service units would come together. And in fact, instead of a service, the reason the service units really loved it is because instead of them planning an entire cookie rally, we only asked them to bring one portion, so like a booth. So let's say, for example, uh, Somerville. Somerville chose goal setting. Uh, Somerville would attend the, the cookie rally, they would do their um, activity, and the girls, kind of similar to now, where they will go around the entire room and do um, all the, the, the booths, but instead of, like I said, instead of you all doing the entire cookie rally, you all would just do one portion of it, and we loved it so much in Texas that when we first started doing it, we had like about 200 girls and then before I left, we had over 2,000 girls that would participate. And let me tell you, it, our old council was 94,000 square miles. And people would drive up to eight hours to come to this cookie rally because it was that great of an event. We partnered with our community and the girls would make swaps. And it was just a great time for everybody to have, uh, to see each other, to network. And then especially the girls, the girls, it was just a big party right before cookies started. And that's what we sometimes forget is that cookies are supposed to be fun. And that's what I wanna do. That is really, honestly, my mission is to have a great cookie rally uh, for our council. Our girls deserve it. We are not, um, we are one council, basically. I mean, we really are. And um, I would love to see this. All right, so, Anne, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so for cookie booths this year, we know that we're really going to need to think outside of the cookie box. So we've developed a four page flyer brochure. It's available in the help center, but it um, is kind of a step by step guide for a virtual cookie booth. And you may be asking what is a virtual cookie booth. It's a cookie booth hosted on social media and the girls can make it personal and fun and they can ask um, they can share their link when they invite family and friends and as I mentioned they can share their digital cookie link and sell cookies that way so we know that we might not be able to be face-to-face -face a lot in the near future so we do want to ha girls to have the ability to um, do those social media events and to create a lot of excitement for Girl Scout cookies Yes, and I had a volunteer who already looked at this, Anne, and she loved all the signage. I love, everybody loves these forms. Look at these. They're so colorful, and we all laugh, right? The whole, the infamous five for 20, right? <laughs> but we love this. Look at these, the big cookie signs. There's a menu board. There's social distancing signs. There's no denying that these signs scream and yell and advertise for Girl Scouts. These are Girl Scout cookie signs, so... Everybody absolutely love these. And then of course, as Ann mentioned, we are, uh, we do want to hold a whole lot more of like the drive-through uh, cookie booths. And then my favorite, I don't know if you all had this before Ann, but this is like the most cutest thing ever, is that thank you reorder slip. And it says right there, it's right in the middle. It says, thank you for your order. If you want some MOA, and then you would put your troop information. And the reason I love this is because so many times you all have been at the troop, at the cookie booths, where a customer says, you know what, I, ha I don't get paid till next Friday, I can only buy one box right now. But when are, you, when are you coming back? And so that way the customer can leave with something stating like, hey, if I want more cookies, I can call this troop and get more cookies so, or Samoa cookies. So we love this too, and you guys really did an amazing job with that. And then this- Well, thank you. Yeah, th this raffle, these, uh, this form is already on our website as well. Um, last year, our cookies uh, product sales committee 
actually uh, determine that if a customer purchased 12 packages or more, they can um, enter the raffle to win a year's supply of Girl Scout cookies. And then speaking of cookie booths, only product sales committee, service unit cookie chairs uh, can approve, or staff can approve, I'm sorry, can approach businesses for booths. And the reason we put that in place is because we don't want to bombard our managers. In fact, it has happened many times where a manager will say, you know what, I just approved a form for somebody else. I'm trying to run a business just leave me alone. It has happened. So because of that reason, we do limit the uh, people who are out there securing cookie booths. Um, any adult supervising a booth must be a current registered member, and that means dads too. Dads can absolutely help us, but they have to be registered. All girls in the troop must be offered the opportunity to participate. That doesn't mean that they have to. That just means that they're given that opportunity. Also, if you need to cancel a booth, try to do so at least 48 hours in advance in eBuddy, so it gives the other troops an opportunity to sign up for that time slot. No illegal roadside booths. What that means is I can't just go in the middle of a parking lot, open my trunk, and sell Girl Scout cookies. Um, because it has to be, that doesn't mean I can't be on a busy intersection, you know, in a parking lot. That is okay, we just need to put it in eBuddy. We need that form filled out and we need to put it in eBuddy. But if it's not in eBuddy, it pretty much is an illegal cookie booth. No tag-alongs are permitted. And of course, you all know that that's for safety reasons and insurance. Make sure you prepare your booth, okay? Your troop for your booth. And then these two are new. Our product sales committee um, met about three weeks ago and they told me, Aggie, you need to let them know this is very important. And just like Ann said, um, this next year, spe uh, especially, we're going to be, um, I'm not worried. I'm not stressing. I know we're going to have a lot of booths for our girls. But what our product sales committee noticed was that there was a lot of booths that people were signed up for and they never showed up. So they came up with this new rule. If a troop arrives 30 minutes or more late to a booth, they forfeit that booth and another troop can take over that, slot, that time slot. And this is also new. If your troop needs to leave early, please notify your service unit cookie manager. And sometimes we run out of cookies, so we have to leave, that is okay. Sometimes we have older girls that work or we have girls who have other commitments. They are in a dance recital, they're in sports, they're in other things. Um, that is okay, just let somebody else know, uh, I'm sorry, your service unit cookie manager know because she might know of another troop that their booth isn't doing that great and they can uh, send somebody to um, take over that booth. So here are the cookie booth definitions. I pretty much talked about this first one. An illegal cookie booth is just that. It's a booth that is not anybody. A lemonade stand is when a girl decides to sell her own cookies in her own yard for the passing public to buy. And that is not considered a booth, so that does not have to go in eBuddy. That would just mean that if like, for example, I wanted to sell cookies in my yard, I would of course be with my daughter because I'm not gonna leave her there alone with product and money. Um, that is okay. That is absolutely okay to do that. And no, that does not have to go in eBuddy. A parent or guardian booth is a booth that a parent and guardian can have with their daughters. However, they cannot have another Girl Scout from another family. This is still allowed. We call these church, school booths, or troop only booths. That means, what that means is like, let's say my troop, my church, I'm sorry, says, hey, I know you're in Girl Scouts and you know what? On a Sunday, if your troop wants to sell cookies, that's great. But I only want your troop to be in here or to only your troop to sell. That is absolutely okay. You would contact myself Ashley or Deborah for the form. We have those forms ready and you would have that filled out and we would just put it in eBuddy. Remember, it has to be in eBuddy. The thing is, once it's loaded, it will be shown up as read only. So no other troop will have access to that booth, only your troop. And then of course, a troop booth is the same as our traditional way of doing booths. Uh, that we must have adult girl ratio um, and um, that's, yeah what we normally do. Any questions? Right. Yeah, we do. Um, okay. Hold on one second. I'm just, because some of them were like answered while you were talking. So just a second. Okay. Um, 
just to be clear, everyone, because we did have a few people ask, you know, of course, about a lemonade stand type of deal and the parent slash guardian cookie booths and of course the church school booths where it's only the treat only. I think that answered everyone's question for that. Yes. If you still have further questions on that, message again. Um, and one of the things we're going to do different this year is Ashley's actually, thank you, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, so that was another thing. Um, so Amy, great. She just messaged me privately, sorry. Perfect. Amy, great. Um, yes, that is correct. Also, one question, sorry, there's a lot. That's okay. I'm trying to scroll back up. Uh, yes, cookies are still $4. Our regular, like, staple cookies are $4, and our specialty ones are still five fifty, dollars which are the s'mores and the toffee-tastics. We have a slide on that. We have a slide on that. We're getting that's to that. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I thought. I'm like, I'm pretty sure, but I just had to say it. And then also, can we post virtual cookie booths on our neighborhood page? That's a question I have not seen. So what do you say? <laughs> so I will get to that slide very shortly and we, that will answer your questions. Okay. Okay. And yes, if you still live in a, an apartment complex, I mean, you're still able to sell to your community. Okay. Yeah. The, there is a, an, um, thank you for bringing the apartment thing up. So let's say, you can go in front of your apartment, right? But what I heard, what I heard that some people do is they'll go to, let, let's say it's in a gated community, like a gated community. Um, somebody said, well, can I go to the front where people come in and set up a booth there? And I, I'm sorry, a lemonade stand there. I said, no, because it has to be in front of their own yard. Yes, I understand if a, the community um, allows you to be in the front, that's okay. We, that would just be considered a booth. So, so we would have to put that in eBuddy. Can we talk about the weather? Because I have seen some, okay. Uh, they wanted to know, sorry, because we currently, no, my bad, I'm sorry. They're just floating in. Could you talk about weather? Because I've seen troops have girls in the cold and rain. Well, but it's up to you. You all need to prepare your troop. So you all as a troop, if you decide as a troop leader, hey, it is too cold outside. We're not doing a booth. That is okay. However, there are some girls that are cold getters and they don't care if it's raining. In fact, I'm sure a lot of you have seen where when it is raining or the weather is bad, you actually sell more because customers are like, oh my gosh, bless their heart. Let's buy all the cookies they have so that they can get home. Of course, if there was a hurricane or like it's where we are, <laughs> we have to use our best, best judgment basically when we're out there with boots. If it's cold, it doesn't get that cold here. I mean, it really doesn't. Make sure you tell your girls, wear gloves. Wear a jacket, wear a scarf, wear a, be a beanie. I mean, whatever you need to do to prepare your girls. Okay, and then did you answer the question about virtual cookie booths being posted in a neighborhood page? We'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, that's it. Go okay. on. Cool. So this is GSUSA booth guidelines. The council and volunteers are encouraged to use their best judgment in setting up cookie booths in locations that will be open, accessible, and safe for all girls and potential customers. Certain locations may be inappropriate for young girls based on the standards of your local community, may negatively impact the cookie program experience for girls, and or may negatively impact our brand in your community. For additional clarity, girls should not sell in or in front of establishments that they themselves cannot legally patronize. So what do you do when you arrive at a booth? Uh, please note if you are the first uh, troop to arrive there, make sure you check in with the manager. Make sure you go in the store and say, hey, uh, I'm with Troop 5. We are here uh, for the next three hours. Is there anywhere specifically that you would like for us to set up? 
And what people were telling us at trainings is they love to be the first one because normally the store manager will uh, announce on the PA system and say, hey, uh, customers and staff, uh, the Girl Scouts are outside, you know, make sure you grab your Girl Scout cookies on your way out. And also, if you are not, I do have to say this because this was brought up uh, in a few areas. If you are not the first troop and you are the second troop to arrive, please make sure when that booth, cookie booth exchange, so if it's Ashley was there first and then I'm gonna take over after she's done, Let's make sure we are nice and polite to each other. We are Girl Scouts and remember that our public is watching us. We are not only representing our, your troop, our council, we are representing all Girl Scouts everywhere. Okay, so I did hear about some really bad exchanges that have happened. Let's not do that. Our girls are watching and then our community is watching. So let's please stop that. We are Girl Scouts. It doesn't matter, uh, we are Girl Scouts. We are Girl Scouts of Eastern South Carolina. It doesn't matter if a girl from Myrtle Beach came to, North, to Charleston and vice versa. We welcome all our Girl Scouts, okay? Please make sure we are staying out of customer's way and make sure that you view any notes uh, noted by the store manager. And of course, Ashley would put them in eBuddy. So for example, if a uh, store manager says, I don't want daisies and brownies. If you have daisies and brownies, you would not select that booth, okay? Um, and if you are the last troop of the day, you should check out for the day. Let the manager know that Girl Scouts are done and of course say thank you. <coughs> this is the same as this past season. This is how we will select cookie booths. It was decided from our product sales committee that premium booths for our council are Walmarts, neighborhood Walmarts, and Sam's Club. So in our first two rounds, two, two of your booths can be premium booths. What that means is that on cookie booth round one, January 7th at 7 p.m., your troop has 24 hours to select five booths in your service unit, okay? And when I say 24 hours, it means 24 hours. After 24 hours, it will lock you out. It locks me out. I cannot make any changes to your booths. So you, again, January 7th, you have 24 hours to select five booths in your area. And as I said, two of those can be premium booths. On cookie booth round two, that is January 14th, 7 p.m., you have 24 hours to make another, to select five more booths in your service unit. Again, by round two, you all should have 10 cookie booths. By round three, which is January 21st at 7 p.m., the booths will remain open until the end of the sale and troops can select as many booths as they desire in any location in our council, okay? So that means if I have family in Myrtle Beach and there is a location there that I want to do, I can gladly take my cookies and do a cookie booth in Myrtle Beach and or Florence or Orangeburg or Hilton Head or Beaufort. Any booth that is open by round three is up for grabs and it can be uh, selected by anybody. Any questions on this? No. Awesome. So um, our cookie booth uh, bash this year is, our theme is cookie roundup. Our product sales committee did select this. It is gonna be the weekend of February 26th to the 28th. What that means is that if you want to participate in this council competition, your troop would decorate a cookie booth on that weekend of February 26th to the 28th. And whatever the theme cookie roundup means to you, whatever that means to your girls, that is how you decorate your booth. And um, you would send your pictures to me by March 12th. And then I put them in a document, uh, in a Word document, we send it to the board of directors and they are the ones who choose our winners. The top three winners do receive a gift certificate to any of our council shops. These were our, our winners this past season. <coughs> Excuse me. Best Olympics theme went to Troop 2003 slash 2030. And in fact, we could possibly do that again, but we decided on Cookie Roundup. The best overall booth was Troop 178. And then for best do well things, uh, there was a tie between 1204 and 3204. Um, in fact, every single one of these winners was at our in face like um, live trainings and they told me that 
this booth that they did this weekend actually made the most sales that any other cookie booths did. Um, and that's interesting and I love it because if you saw the dates, it is towards the end of February. That's almost towards the end of our sale. And all of these troops here told me that that weekend they made, or not that weekend, that booth that they decorated, they actually made the most sales that they ever did all season long. So just keep that in mind. We do have some new cookie booth opportunities. GSUSA does have an agreement with GNC locations and Ashley will be uh, calling them. So you'll start seeing those in eBuddy this year. If you have food truck locations that you would want to do a cookie booth, by all means, we all know that there's areas where food trucks are there and they make money. <laughs> We're also looking for banks for after hours because they already have the whole drive-through set up. So what we want to do is like on Saturdays after their hours or even Sundays, and that's an ideal drive through cookie booth location. And of course, mom and pop stores. All right. Now we're going to talk about our cookies that are still $4 a box or $5.50 for the girls, the s'mores and the toffee tastics. So they are $4 and $5.50 for the Girl Scout s'mores and the toffee tastics. I do have to tell you all that our sister Girl Scouts in Mountains to Midlands are going to $5 a box. So we do know that some of you like to like trade cases and that's okay. Uh, just, just keep that in mind because they will be charging more for their, their cookies this year. And I'm gonna let Ann talk about this next slide. Thanks, Aggie. So um, one thing you'll notice on the side panel of our cookie packaging is an updated allergen disclosure statement. So all packaged foods in the United States are required to identify the presence of allergens um, in their manufacturing facilities. So we've added a statement that basically said manufactured in a shared facility with peanuts, tree nuts, and eggs. There's been no changes to the manufacturing process or our ingredients. Um, you can see on the right hand side, we don't even use eggs in any of our Girl Scout cookies, but there are other things that are being baked um, during the season. So we do have to disclose that. I think there's one more slide about Toffee Tastic. So um, with the precautionary allergen disclosure um, for Toffee, we have to note that the cookies are made in a shared facility with wheat. Um, all of our Toffee Tastic cookies are certified gluten-free by a national organization. We have a designated mixer for gluten-free, and we also, the entire process is segregated from the other areas of the bakery when toffee is in production. So just so you know, again, no changes to the ingredients or the manufacturing process, just to the allergen disclosure statements on the side of the packages. Very cool. All right, I'll let you talk about all this other stuff too. Hold on one second, I have two okay. questions. Uh, one of the questions okay. is, do you plan to have a nut-free cookie? So we do have four nut-free cookies. Our tree foil and thin mint are both nut-free, as well as our Girl Scout Samoas and our Toffee Tastic. And you may say, well, lemon nuts don't have peanuts or peanut butter in them, but they're manufactured on lines where we make other cookies that have peanuts or tree nuts. So we can't make that same statement. So we do have four nut-free cookies. Okay, but they're made in the same facility as the other cookies? They are. They are. And I've been to the bakery and we are very cautious of um, the do, -si -do line. The tag-along line is in an enclosed um, portion of the bakery because we have to keep it at a certain temperature. So the tag-along doesn't really provide any concern. But we do have um, very thick vertical blinds. And if you're part of the do, -si -do or the tag-along line, you wear orange coverings versus like a white covering. And they're required to wash their hands and their shoes every time they go in and out and change their their vests and their coverings every time they're in and out of the the where the peanuts or the peanut butter lines are. We're very careful about the way we um, bake our cookies. Nice. Does that answer the question, Ashley? In a roundabout way, yes. 
Yes. Okay, go on. Well, if anybody else has any questions, we do have a, an allergen guide that I can send. Um, it is in the eBuddy Help Center, but I know not everybody has access right now. So I can send that to both you and Aggie, Ashley. That way, whoever's asking the question can see um, kind of the allergen chart that we have. And if they have any other questions, you can let me know offline. Um, Send that to we Deborah know that as well. social media. Okay, I will. I'm sorry, I forgot about Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Um, when it comes to social resources and social media, we know it's super important for the council, but we also know it's important for the troops and the families. And the more social media you can get out there, um, the wider that that message is expanded. So at littlebrowniebaker.com and in the eBuddy Help Center, we do have our social media toolkit. These are just pre-designed um, GIFs or GIFs, um, the GIFs that you can post to social media. So whether you're excited that cookies are going to start in a month or it's cookie time or cookies are coming, it's National Cookie Day, where it's cold in Charleston and you wanna talk about Samoa's hot chocolate, we have a lot of resources available, not only for you as troop leaders and service unit managers, but for your families as well. So every person who can post different things about the cookie program, it just expands the um, width of the program. And this I'll just say right away, um, Ashley found this on your, uh, on your website and she went to Donna immediately and was like, we need to put this on our website. So this is on our website. As you can see on the left side, it actually has its own tab that says Merry Girl Scout Cookies. So if you all were to order your cookies on December 11th and have them uh, shipped to you all, you guys could actually do some of these with your girls. And we just love these. We thought they were so cute, so simple. These are on our website already. So, all right. And so we are we are in a different a lot of different um platforms for social media so we've had the facebook page for samoa cookies for quite some time we do have a new um, little brownie baker community on facebook we're also on twitter instagram and youtube yep. and now we're going to talk a little bit about our social media guidelines uh, so this should answer all your questions that you all had about posting okay Remind your parents that they are agreeing to follow social media guidelines once they sign the parent permission form. They can post on their personal social media accounts. They can be creative. They cannot post on eBay, Craigslist, Amazon, Facebook, Yard Sale, Trading Post, or Marketplace, okay? And the reason for that is this is GSUSA guidelines. Girls are only to use the internet to market the Girl Scout Cookie Program to family and friends. Family and friends are people the girl or family personally know. So like those neighborhood, marketplace, all of that, they do not personally know that. And as you can see, this is per GSUSA. I do understand that people still post that, but I need you all to tell me. When you guys see those posts on Facebook marketplace, Facebook yard sales, I need you all to let me know so that I can message them. Um, if I don't know, I can't do anything about it. The Girl Scout Cookie Program is a girl-led program and online marketing and sales for our efforts should always be led by a girl while being supervised by her parents or caretakers. For safety purposes, online marketing activities through social media should always be done through accounts set to private. Should any online marketing activities identified as in violation of guidance, GSUSA, or the council reserves the right to intervene and request removal or remove the post. So I hope that answers your questions. Any any questions on that, Ashley? Yes, we've got a few questions. All right. Um, let's see, just a second. Okay, so we had someone, I know this person joined us late and I honestly cannot remember if we talked about this, but I know that we have talked about it in our in-person trainings. Okay. So I just wanna make sure, and I don't recall you saying it here, but I just wanted to talk about the location of booths, like for example, being in the same shopping center have we talked about that yet no what, like what like so for example like if we have a booth say at bilo and then across the way in the same shopping center there's a gym 
and we have a booth there. I okay, know we so talked about that in in-person trainings. I just don't recall if we've already talked about that here. We actually talked about that in Buford, and I would be surprised if that person that's asking you is in from Buford. Um, that is allowed. I've gone to that location. I'm pretty sure that's the same location, and if not, that's okay. Um, remember, we do have two sets of customers, so if that was the case, there's a certain, cu there's customers that are going to buy lows, and then there's people that are going to the gym, for example, or from what I recall, it was a barbershop. Um, we welcome Girl Scouts and we, I, I agree with you, like they can't be right next to each other. So like, let's say there was Bylos and then, so let's say there's Bylos and then um, a Dollar Tree and then that other store, a gym. That's too close. That I do believe is too close. However, um, if you do think that it is too close, I will personally go down and look at it because I've done it in the past. And that's why I say Buford, because that's wh exactly where I went. Um, it was a bylaws that was in question. Um, and the two areas were really, really had good distance between them. And again, those people who are going into bylaws are going to bylaws. They're not necessarily going to the gym or to the barbershop. Uh, so I hope that helps. Okay. And then can you go back to the marketplace slide? This one? The or this one? No, it was the one before that. Before? That one. No, that one. No, no, no. Go back or go forward. That this one? one? Okay. okay. So we have some questions on this as well. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Let me scroll up to where it was. So it says last year the argument from other troops in the neighborhood was that our neighborhood page is private and not a yard sale or marketplace type of page. Could we add no neighborhood pages whether or not it's a marketplace page? Okay, look at this slide right here from GSUSA. It is, it is supposed to be the family and friends, girls, the people that the girls personally know. I doubt that in one of those neighborhood marketplaces that you all know every single person. So when we're doing that, we are, even though it's private, we are opening it up to people we do not know. And this is GSUSA guidelines where it's talking about girls are to use it for family and friends. That's it. Okay. And then we're asking if there's something that we can like just keep on if we can keep like this part the GSUSA and the GSESC guidelines onto our website so Beautiful. I'm sorry I was gonna say this is actually what I do when people message me and say hey this person has posted I actually private message the person that posted the the post and I actually send them this exact slide that is on your screen right now and I do ask them to remove it it hasn't happened, knock on wood, here, but at my old council, they would not remove it. So what I did is I would go to the administrator of that neighborhood post or that uh, yard sale post, and I would ask them to remove it. In many cases, I asked to be an administrator myself, and a lot of times they did let me, and I would remove them myself. So I just need to know if they're happening. Okay, so hold on one second. I'm confused on what to consider a virtual booth, just making, okay. Basically, I think people just wanted to say also neighborhood page as well, or neighborhood group, if we could add that in there, which is something that we can. I will add it, absolutely okay. add it. Yes. And then also, if we could possibly put this into like an HTML document and put us sit on our website under where all of our other cookie forms are, just so like, for example, instead of you being the police <laughs> of going around, like we could just, you know, hand out that's a piece perfect. of paper or copy and paste. So I think that's something yep, that I absolutely do. are looking for. Um, also, hold on one second. And it is, it is on the parent permission form. Um, it is, okay. there's a section where the parents actually are agreeing to not post on, I can't think of the verbiage right now because it's not in front of me, but it does state it on the parent permission form. So that's why I said here, remind your parents that they are agreeing to follow our social media guidelines once they sign the parent permission form. So I will absolutely post this as its own little personal, as its own standing document. We will put it on our website, um, but it is, the parents are agreeing to this already. Okay. 
um, continuing on this track, what are the consequences of parents who breach these rules? So, as I mentioned, I'm not a cookie police and I do notify them. And um, should it continue to happen, it hasn't, like I said, knock on wood, hasn't been an issue. I will go to my product sales committee and then we will discuss what we need to do. However, that will be way before, I mean, way after I've already contacted that person. I, we will do several things that I, I don't, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I just think it has to be done one by one. It's not that we're not going to do anything, but all cases are different. Okay. Um, this includes next door, which we know, or I don't know if you know, but that's the app that it's like a neighborhood app or really any neighborhood apps. I would say family and friends, yeah. Fam family and friends, family please. and friends. So no next door. Um, lastly, sorry, Amy. Um, I was trying to keep our like topics together. So it says I'm confused as to what you consider a virtual booth just making a personal post on your parents' Facebook page with a digital cookie link? Is that what a, basically, can you go back to like what a virtual booth is? Because if we're, t we're kind of talking about, you know, posting it on like neighborhood pages and stuff. So a virtual booth, is that only allowed to be on a parent's or their own Facebook page? And do you want to answer that? I don't know if you're talking, but you're on mute. <laughs> Shoot, sorry, I keep That's muting okay. myself. I'm opening the um, the booth guide. So, virtual booths hosted on social media give girls a way to achieve their sales goals and help others in their community from home. So, yes, they um, you can go live on Facebook or Instagram to reach large number of potential customers. You can set up a Facebook event, see the directions below. So it would be to your private, you know, your settings are private on Facebook or Instagram. So you're only reaching out to the people that you follow or that follow you, but in your private group. That's correct. Does that help? Okay, so when you consider a private group, just me being the social media guru I am, for example, if it's a mom group, that's a private group, but that doesn't mean that it's only reaching people that are like, you know, that you personally know. So it's their personal Facebook page to family and friends. I don't want to keep talking about this. I don't, I think right. that it's pretty... I mean, I'm sorry. I, I think that's pretty, I don't even know the word. If you all have any further questions on this, you can, of yes. course, email myself, Aggie, or Deborah. I will once again put all of our email addresses in the chat box. That is and, correct. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. You're up, Ben. <laughs> So in terms of volunteer training, the Troop Cookie Manager Manual is always the first place you should go um, for things involving the council. But Little Brownie has some fun resources and just different resources that you can use um, if you want to learn more about the cookie program. So we have our cookie portal and that when you are when you gain access to eBuddy, you, you log in at the cookie portal level, but you also have access to our VIP e-training as well as our Built by Me cookie planner. And those are just additional resources um, for you to learn more about the cookie program. When it comes to VIP e-training, you can get yourself set for a great season with these short video lessons. So we have video lessons surrounding program, marketing, technology, and cookies, and then a fun quiz at the end of each section. So for the marketing section, we have resources for a virtual booth, or I'm sorry, virtual sale resources, in-person sale resources, social media resources. We did remove the cookie house party resources. Um, 
because we didn't think it was good to invite people into your home right now. Um, so this is an old screenshot, but there's just all kinds of different things out there if you want to learn more about the program. Um, it's not only available through the Cookie Portal, but it's also on the eBuddy app. The Built by Me Cookie Planner, I think this is a great resource for those first year and second year troop leaders. Um, it starts with a digital questionnaire and the questions are very simple, um, drop down answers. Are you, what age level are your girls? How are you gonna participate in the program? Are you going to go to booth sales, go to a cookie rally, participate with digital cookie. And then once you've answered the questions, it delivers back a customized plan with re links to resources. So there's some safety information if the girls are gonna go door to door and some information about digital cookie. So um, you can access both this and the VIP e-training through the cookie portal. So it's easy kind of somewhere where you are um, all the time once the program starts. We have our Little Brownie Baker website. This is our public facing website and it is available um, to anyone. Um, it's an online tool to help volunteers and family learn more about the resources that we have to offer. So we do have the We've Got This Toolkit um, with virtual resources, meeting backgrounds, social media shareables. That's a good way. I like the way that said versus all the things I said before about social media. Um, social distancing signs and mascot themed fun. All right. So once it's time to do these things like place an initial order, reorder cookies, select cookie booths, transfer cookies and select your recognitions, I will send you um, in time training, which is basically uh, when you need it, because I know that if we go over it now, you're going to be like, I don't know what Aggie said. I totally forgot. So just like this past season is when it's time to do these things, I will go ahead and send you like a short video and step-by-step -step instructions on how to do these items. So now I'm going to talk shortly um, about our second <laughs> before we go on yep. uh, one last kind of social media question. We said yep. that we can share little brownie bakers like images and stuff like that a month before uh, the cookie sale, does that mean the December cookie sale where we sell online or does that mean our January start date when we're selling in person? So you can go on Facebook and post something about cookies coming right now, right this instant. The only thing with it is you cannot take orders and you know your people are going to want one second. I'm so sorry. Um, I thought my phone was off. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, the thing we don't want to do because people will tell us is if you're taking orders. So if you were to put like, hey, and it's okay to do that. It is absolutely okay to put, hey, uh, Girl Scout cookies are coming in one month. Um, but what's going to happen is that's going to trigger your friends and family to say, okay, put me down for five boxes of Thin Mints. I want the Lemon Ups. I want peanut butter patties. We don't want to do that. I'm sorry, tag along. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, we don't want to do that because then that is you taking pre-orders. We do not take pre-orders. The only thing that we can do again, but starting December 11th is sell cookies through the digital, uh, the digital cookie link. That's all we can do. That's which the only can, reason. Okay, What's that? Which, can sh which they can share to their family and friends that link. Yeah. I and just then, don't. It's just that what's going to happen is those people are going to want to place orders. And I mean, we can't stop them. We really can't. But if that were to happen, you should like say, here's a digital cookie order here. I cannot give you cookies until January 16th. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with posting that stuff. That's why it's there. Um, it's just, just be careful with not taking pre-orders until January 16th. Okay. I hope that and helps. then last question real quickly before we move on to banking. It says, can we ask people to drop their email? So for example, if we posted that image and say they are our friends, well, technically say you post it on Facebook, then you could just direct message them. Yeah. Which is fine. So yeah, you can ask for their emails. I'm just making Absolutely. sure that's, that's fine, right? Because yeah. you're, they're your friends. Okay. Right. Right. That it, that's right. it. Go ahead. All right. Cool. So now I'm going to talk about our banking procedures. We're the same as this year. 
make sure, like I said, in order for you all to have access to eBuddy, we have to have your Troop Cookie Manager position form that I've already emailed you and an updated ACH form if we don't have one already from this past fall product sale. Remember that once your girls' um, parents start giving you money to please deposit it into your Troop bank account. If you have any NSF checks that need to be submitted to me, uh, try to do so within seven days of notification. Um, discrepancy reports also need to be emailed to me by uh, March 23rd, and that is so that we can make the appropriate edits uh, to your, your ACH. So these are the ACH dates, I already went over them. The first ACH is uh, February 5th, and we are gonna go, uh, we're going to withdraw $1.50 per box of your initial order. The second ACH is February 19th, and we are going to withdraw $1.50 per box of your second and wet third week of reorders. And then the final ACH is April 2nd, so that'll be the remaining balance. So now I need to talk to you all about our cookie debt collection procedures. Um, you all know that if you don't have those ACHs in place, if, if your ACH is $5,000, but you only have $2,000, that is okay. You just need to talk to me. You need to talk to Deborah. You need to talk to our finance. You need to be talking to us, okay? Um, once, if you as a troop leader are, you still owe us money, what happens is this: these next procedures. So more than likely, and actually not more than likely, likely it'll be Deborah, our awesome, my awesome assistant, who's gonna be calling you and emailing you. We want to get to talk to you. If we still haven't heard from you, Deborah, let me tell you, Deborah documents everything. She is amazing at doing this. Only then, if you still haven't talked to us, we are gonna turn in the debt to our volunteer management department, which is Michaela Watts, and she will be sending you a letter uh, removing you as a troop leader, okay? And again, that's only if you're not talking to us. If by that time she sends you that letter, you're still not talking to us, then it gets turned over to our finance department. Our finance department is gonna send you two collection letters by certified mail. And then if by that point, you're still not talking to us, responding emails, responding to uh, phone calls, then Diane personally goes to the police department and files a report uh, for theft. And this happens for two reasons. Number one, Diane already pays uh, insurance for the council that covers theft. And the reason we do that is because once we now go after uh, that money, we're not going after what's owed to the council. We are going to go after what's owed to the troop because the girls, the girls sometimes don't even know that. And let me just tell you something. We do not have a debt collection problem here. In fact, last year uh, we had zero debt and that was amazing. I've never heard of that. I really have not. This past season, we had a fee a little bit, not too much, but it wasn't, it wasn't outstanding. It was not. I just need to let you all know that this is important and uh, that you all understand that this is what we do. And so what happens is that when Diane um, poli uh, files that police report for theft, she then turns that police report into our insurance and then they cut us a check for that amount. So then what we do is that amount, we make the troop whole first. So if that troop still is intact and uh, that we nobody knows where the, the troop leader is and uh, we still haven't heard from them, if they're still remaining a troop, we all absolutely cover those girls. Those girls get their money, okay? And then um, we do have some new information that's coming up soon too. Uh, we are very, very, very excited. If you haven't heard about Clover, Clover is a uh, credit card processing system like Square that because you all did such an amazing job with our cookie sale, uh, Diane and I went to the board and say, hey, can we offer Clover to our troop leaders? And they were like, of course. So what that means is kind of like Square, if you are at a cookie booth or your girl is going door to door, the girl can use, the, it's called Clover Go. And uh, basically the girls would do a, a credit card transaction and uh, with that app and the fees would come to us. So the, the, the way it's gonna work is Ashley is actually gonna take the lead on this. We are going to put a training on Clover and it'll come out in December because technically you don't need it till January 16th when the cookie sale starts, okay? But we're gathering all this information. We're gonna show you exactly how to set it up. 
So that way you set up your girls into your, your troop account. And then when there's, when they're taking those transactions, that money goes straight to your troop bank account and the fees come to us. So we are actually going to take on those fees for this council. And we are absolutely excited for this opportunity for everybody. And also we're doing this because you all, again, you guys did such an amazing job. We want to give back to you. And then number two, it also is touchless. And not many people carry um, cash and checks anymore. Everybody does everything through credit card, debit card, and then that way. So it's touchless. And uh, there was something else with it. It's consistent. So like everybody in our council um, can have it. Any questions on that, Ashley? Um. Kathy, who just, or hold on. So there can be a card reader to purchase. So you literally, it's just like facial recognition, but it's number recognition. So it recognizes the number and it literally, it doesn't remember the numbers, but it recognizes them and that's how you can scan it. You scan it with the camera on your phone. But yes, there is a card reader like Square. However, Council will not be purchasing that. That will be purchased by the troop if you would like to do that. But like I said before, it's all based off of number recognition. And yes, there is a way for each girl to have their own. Um, so you can tell like the difference in transactions and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, like you said, that will be covered in the training, which will be in December sometime because you don't need it until uh, January 15th when the bid sale starts. And Emily Rose, I'm super excited that you are excited for Clover because I am as well. I am a huge Clover fan. So yeah, um, but look forward to that training and that will be a virtual one just like this and we'll be recording it as well. Yep. And uh, um, there's also plenty other councils that are doing this. So it's not, Clover is very familiar with Girl Scouts and the cookie sale. That is correct. All right, that's it. All right, now Anne, you're up again. <laughs> Thanks, Aggie. So um, eBuddy is our inventory management system. I know we have a couple new people on the line. So um, it's the place where you will go and do all your cookie recording for the girls. Um, we do have some contactless features that are available. Um, at both the delivery and the cupboard if we need them as we get closer to the time the council can decide to use them. We, if you are a cupboard manager, we have a brand new dynamic dashboard for you. And then we have our eBuddy app. Um, if, you, if you're a cupboard manager and you've used the Cupboard Keeper app, we've now built that into um, the eBuddy app and into the eBuddy on the computer so you don't have a Cupboard Keeper app any longer. And our eBuddy app certainly helps troops and service unit volunteers make decisions, order cookies, and manage the program from their mobile devices, whether it's a tablet or a phone, versus having to be in front of a computer. So anything you can do on the app, anything you can do on the computer, you can do on the app. Very cool. Here we go. So you want to stay in the know on the go, streamline dashboards, important messages, um, finding cookie booths, exchanging cookies. The help center is located there. Um, the app is in the app store or on Google Play. It is available now. If you've had it in the past, it's still there for you. And this is our cookie calculator. And I can't take 100% of the credit for it because I did have some help building it. However, I think that it will certainly help you with that 75% of um, what you did last year. So there's two ways that it'll work. If you're an existing troop, you'll type in your troop number and it will pull in your um, number of packages that were sold last year, you enter the number of girls that were selling, and then it gives you a suggested number of packages. This is a 75% of last year is the suggested number of packages. However, you do not have to keep it in um, variety. 
you don't have to order exactly this order. It just has to be 75% of last year. So if you don't, if you had maybe some Samoas left over at the end of the season and you don't want 1,068 packages, you may want to add that to your thin mint line just as long as you get to that bottom line number of 5,275 for this particular troop. Um, the troop order is in packages, and when you get to that 5,275, the box um, that's currently read under my troop packages, my troop order packages will turn green, and then it will convert it into cases just so you know how many cases you'll be receiving if, once you go to pick up. Um, Aggie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that if you want to calculate if the troop leader wants to calculate it they can print it sign it and send it to you and you'll enter it into eBuddy for them that's correct that's perfect so um, this is just a way so you know what that 75 percent looks like we also know that um, we've got a couple new troop leaders and um, new people to the cookie program so we have a secondary tab for new troops and it's a drop down level based on your age level of girls and the previous year PGA for all of like the Daisy troops. So in this example, it's Daisy's, the PGA was 312. And let me just say, your PGA is the highest probably in the whole eastern half of the country. Um, I, this is my 12th cookie program. I have, I live in Ohio. And really, I've never had anybody break 300, much less as high as you went. So congratulations on that. So this is going to show you for a PGA of 312 and the number of girls, it will give you a suggested order. And then you can make the decision on what you want to bring in in the My Troop Order column. And again, when you hit the suggested number of packages, it will turn um, green. Again, if you don't want to bring in 283 cases or packages of Samoas, you can wiggle the numbers around. And again, you can print it, sign it, and send it to Aggie, and she'll put it into eBuddy for you. That is correct. And again, this is just a suggestion. You do not have to do this by any means. If you are not comfortable with that 75%, and like Ann mentioned, you want to change those, make those edits, that is okay. That is, this was the easiest way, though, for us to calculate that 75% for that per girl average reward. Um, so, yeah. Okay, I have a few questions here before we move on to That's the okay. continuing on with that. So, just to be clear that any cookies that are ordered in December by actual customers that are not part of the initial order are shipped directly to the customer. So when you send out your digital cookie link to have people start purchasing cookies in December, it goes directly to the customer. So they will have to pay shipping and handling. They cannot pick it up from the girl. That um, is correct. They would have to select that uh, customer ship option. If they choose that girl delivery, then they're going to have to wait until January 16th to fill those orders. Okay. And then also, do orders that, that are placed online in December, so for example, through digital cookie, do those count towards your 75% of your initial order? No. Uh, what's the average for the initial order prize per girl? It is, everybody's is different, so it's 75% of um, your packages sold last year. Okay, so what is the prize? So. Oh, I'm sorry. It was that cooling fabric bandana. Each of the girls would get that. And then that volunteer pet folio. Okay. And that's it. Okay, cool. And so now we're going to talk about initial deliveries. As I mentioned earlier, they do start between January 11th through the 16th. Um, if you are coming to pick up your cookies, make sure your vehicles are empty and ready to be loaded. Um, please try to arrive to your delivery site as close as possible uh, to your time. 
in Azalea. In Charleston, we do have a new cookie warehouse, okay? So um, it is still on Cross County Road, except that Del J. Cook, we're not, no, they're no longer a cookie cupboard. Azalea Warehouse has always stored, as long as I, I don't know how many years, but they have always stored our cookies and now they're gonna store them and distribute them. So they are going to be our cookie cupboard as well. So please do not show up at Del J Cook on January 16th when uh, that is our, our cookie pickup here at Charleston, okay? Um, so make sure that you select those who pick up here at Azalea pick up your time. It's going to be like this past year. You do not have to show up by service unit. You, once you place your order and you select your, then you select your time. You do not have to come in with your service unit. If there's a time that works best for you, that is the time that you would select. Of course, avoid bringing children for the safety of everybody, as you all know and have been there. Um, it is crazy. We have cars moving all over the place. We have those um, forklifts being moved, cookies being moved. We just want to make sure that we're being safe as possible, okay? And of course, bring um, bring another adult as counter for the cookies. For me, it's like, that would be my safety net. You know, as long as both of us are counting the same amount, I mean, that's what I would feel comfortable because once they are loaded in the vehicle and you sign for them, you are responsible for them and uh, there's nothing really we can do because you've already acknowledged that you have signed for them and that what you signed for is what is in your vehicles. This is uh, GSUSA's suggestion. We all know that you could possibly fit more than 200 cases in a cargo van, but this is what you can safely, the GSUSA considers safely uh, packaging in, a, in these vehicles, okay? So cookie cupboards are gonna be the same as this past season. You all will place a pending order to receive more cookies. Um, and again, as I mentioned, once it's time to order more cookies or do a pending order, I will send you those step-by-step -step instructions. They still have to be done at least 48 hours in advance, okay? So that means if you wanna pick up cookies on a Tuesday, they have to be in the system by Saturday, okay? Um, and then we do have some new cupboards, as I mentioned, North Charleston, has, our warehouse is Azalea Warehouse. It is at 7131 Bryhawk Circle. Florence is new this year. In fact, we always used to have only one drop off and then last year we made it two. And this year, Danielle um, has graciously said, hey, let's just be open all week. So <laughs> she will be open Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then Sandy Ridge, uh, Chuck at camp has also agreed for the first three weeks of cookie sales to have a cookie cupboard at camp. So you would still have to put that plan, pending order if you wanted to pick up cookies at Florence at, or Sandy Ridge, okay? And then you wanna talk about this one, Em? And I think you're, you're muted. Darn it, I apologize. Okay. Um, in this contactless world, um, we have a, this is our cupboard scheduling enhancement. So you may recall in the past when you go to place a pending order, um, you would pick the date and then there was a slider bar and you'd pick a time. There was no control over how many people picked to come on Thursday at 10 a.m. So what we have now is an enhancement where you, once you pick the date, on the right hand side of the screen you'll see the screenshot that will give you the hours of operation for that cupboard so 10 to 3 and then when you click on a time frame then the open time side shows up and this then you pick the time the exact time you're going to come in this particular example 1215 is already taken so you would just have to pick another time. We'll work with the cupboard managers on if they want to use this particular enhancement and what the timing needs to be in terms of this example set up every five minutes, but what does the cupboard manager really want it to be? So we know right. that there's social distancing and we want people to be comfortable picking up cookies from cupboards. So this is the one way um, that we can do that is by having each troop pick a time that they're going to come to pick up cookies. Right. And also, I hate that I have to say this, but this was also brought up at our Charleston training. Um, when you do show up at our new Azalea warehouse, 
please be kind to the warehouse workers. Um, they're doing their best. Yes, we do understand that if you did select 1215, they should be ready. But it does happen where, and Deborah, Deborah can definitely tell you that, where you all select 1215, but you showed up at 12 o'clock. And so the, they're trying their best to accommodate everybody, you know, um, but they are, this is the first time um, that, what is it saying, Brick is doing this, uh, do, being the cookie cupboard. So let's just be kind to our workers, please. I hated to hear that um, it was not necessarily the case this year. And then I'll let you talk about this one, Anne. Everybody loves this, this, this these two uh, slides. This, this is the simplest change that we could make and it's receiving the, the best, um, everybody's super excited about it. So oh, yeah. in the past, we would have a report for rewards and the troop would have a report and it would be like 75 columns wide and it would print on 35 pieces of paper. Now we've condensed it down to this HTML report. You pick which reward set you wanna look at, either the the initial or the final and then it delivers back a very simple report for service unit managers this is what you can use for each of your troops when you're packing their rewards you don't have these huge long reports anymore you have just a report that will print on one or two pages and you know exactly what this particular troop and these girls earned for rewards and we did take it one step further to the to the girl side. So again, no more 75 column report, simple HTML report. When you go to print the girl report, the really cool thing is, is it prints one girl per page. Yay. And it only prints the rewards that she's earned. Those big 75 column spreadsheets used to show you everything the council had to offer. This will only show you what she's earned. So as a troop leader, when you receive the rewards from the service unit manager, now you have something to use to um, separate for your girls. Beautiful. And okay, just like- question. They wanna make sure that the initial order is 75% of what you sold last year or 75% yeah, it's 75% of what you sold last year is what your initial order should be. Correct. And somebody mentioned at a training um, and that, they, well, number one, this one, you have no idea how many people were clapping at this slide, but they were like, it's the little things that make us happy. <laughs> All right. So let's continue to inspire girls to grow and of course work as a team. So I am pretty much done. I have a few more slides to discuss with you all, but make sure that once you go back to your parents, you do discuss with them the paperwork. Of course, have them sign the parent permission form. Uh, let them know about receipts. You all know that we have to have receipts for every single transaction that uh, is happening between the troop and the parent. Let them know the important deadlines and uh, dates, the do's and don'ts on social media. Clearly you all had a lot of questions and concerns on that. So let them know, let them know. I am not a cookie police guys by any means. I do not go searching for people posting these things. They come to me, okay? And then I have to um, address it and I'm not mean by any means, but let them know that what they, what's expected out of them. And of course, the expectations on booths, door to door, let them know about their initial order, reorders, and of course, encourage the parents to watch this cookie training. Um, you all have just spent two hours of your time with me today, and you all are doing it for the girls, for their girls. You all are parents, you all are wives, you, are, um, you all have jobs, some of you go to school. I mean, you guys do a lot of things, and sometimes when you need help, it's because of this, because you, we do ask a lot from you all. And, you know, sometimes you do need help and that is okay. And your parents should know that you guys are doing a lot, okay? Um, so again, this uh, training should be on our website tomorrow. With your girls, make sure you discuss the five skills, safety, badges, money handling, cookies, booth etiquette, of course, have them set their goals, and then the online sales. So I as have a question. Yep. Uh, what type of receipts are required? 
So anytime you do a transaction with your parent, if you give them one box of cookies, you make a receipt. We will give you receipts. If your parent gives you $1, you make a receipt for $1. Everything needs to be tracked. By if by any chance they do not owe they do not pay you money, you have all those receipts and you turn in that discrepancy report along with their parent permission form. I would honestly even give them a receipt for rewards, but that's and just me. also as we're finishing up, um, I'm pretty sure that we can do this, but they want to know if we can also just share the PowerPoint without audio, so they can also share oh, it with their parents. Yes. Absolutely. I was getting to that as well. Uh, so it's actually the next slide. So hang on. <laughs> uh, awesome. So as we've talked about, your initial order is due December 15th by midnight. And that's so you can have cookies on January 16th. Remember that the online does start only digital cookie December 11th. So now where do you go to get help? Of course, Anne has talked about it numerous times, the eBuddy Health Center. In fact, I've already utilized it and uh, it was really cool. Everything she said that's in there is absolutely in there. I've already checked it out for you all. And of course, this PowerPoint. This PowerPoint will be there for you tomorrow, as I mentioned, and the training. I already did the work for you. There's so many graphs, there's so many images, there's so much information that your parents and girls should know absolutely use it. It's already there. Uh, well, it will be there tomorrow. I'm sorry not to, uh, but this PowerPoint will be there without the audio. Absolutely. And of course, your service unit cookie chair. And then the, they will um, direct you emails to, count, to the council if they themselves cannot help you. But you all have some amazing service unit cookie chairs that probably know way more than I do about this cookie program. So I've already talked about this important dates. I will have this on our website as its own document, as well as the GSUSA social media guidelines. And was there another one, Ashley, that I was gonna do? Another what? No, there wasn't. It was important dates and then the social media. So a big virtual high five to all of you. We are done. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now, do we have any more questions? I kept it under, oh, it's exactly 701. So we did two hours. I, <laughs> there was a lot of really good questions that were asked. So that's why it did run a little uh, longer. But any other questions? I'm not having any pop up at the moment. Um, but like I said, you can always email Aggie, Deborah, or myself. Right. We will be there to answer all of your amazing questions. Yes. And we will have this up tomorrow because I'm done for the night. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it. No one else is chatting. So. Amazing, amazing. And make sure you all check your emails. Again, as I said earlier today, I did e email you all that Troop Cookie Manager form and the ACH form. Make sure you guys are getting those to uh, Deborah. And if there's no other questions, I hear a lot of you logging out already. Log out. We're done. I will stick around a little bit with Ashley and Ann in case you all, and Deborah, in case you all have any other questions. Yeah, everyone's just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. So, Deborah, you look cold. Are you cold? Oh, Unmute yeah, yourself. Too. Unmute Deborah. I did. I can't. I hear. don't know what's going on. I got like a chill. I have my. I have Hi, my. Hi, Deborah. Hi. <laughs> that was a good training. Good? Yeah, very good. Okay, I'm sitting here too with the hoodie on, Deborah. It's very cold. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. I, I don't wish know. Well, I I'm wish I had to... socks on. My feet are cold. <laughs> oh, I have socks on. Oh, I don't. Vicky. I have flip flops. Vicky, I Jason. love your Coast Guard flag as always. Jason, are you making dinner or are you washing dishes? <laughs> I'm actually know, doing both, and we're ironing clothes and doing nice. the dishes. Nice. Nice. Uh, <laughs> That's yay, awesome. So, sorry, I was like working while people were talking, but I promise I took notes. No, it's okay. I wasn't looking at anybody. In fact, I'm barely looking at you all. And uh, I couldn't because it, if, if I watch you all, I can't see my screen. So I, I couldn't even see myself. And um, 
everything was good though? Everything was explained well? Everything was good? I, I think it was. And, and the buy low question was me. So you were right. I am in Buford. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's a big gym uh, just down from the buy low. But my family and I go to it because they do their sports there. And then I okay. attend the 